There's a difference between science beyond the laboratory and science for science sake and all the rest of that. I've always been interested in science that has the characteristic that it applies to something, not in the sense of applied research, but rather it's, there's an answer to the question, who cares? From the very beginning, we've been interested in problems that had what we thought were the characteristic that they applied either to a big problem in society or a big problem in the mind or a big problem that people cared about in some other way. So it's always been the case. It's pretty easy to do science that generates a paper. It's much more difficult and more expensive and more complicated to get it into a field trial it's even more difficult and expensive to get it through regulatory clearance. It's even more difficult and expensive by a lot to get it into fully manufactured form with a manufacturing line. And so as you go down that road, you have to think both in terms of money and in terms of time and people. There's only so far that a university research group can take things. So we have two systems now that are successfully through field trials. That is, uh, the way we've gone about this is to say that as a university research group, we're good at invention. We're probably not very good at engineering, so we need to have somebody that we can work with that does engineering. And in the diagnostics area, we work with a not-for-profit that we founded some years ago called Diagnostics for All. And their job is agnostically to take whatever technology seems appropriate to solve a particular problem. So they have taken one of the things that we have worked on jointly, which is a test for liver function, which is useful for looking at toxicity to the liver, primarily in retrovirals for HIV and also in TB. And that's been carried through um, field trials, a thousand people roughly in Vietnam. And we hope next year to have CEMAR clearance, which is the European regulatory clearance. We have another system which looks at sickle cell diagnosis and have carried that out uh, with technical success. It's worked well in small villages in northeast uh, Zambia. And so each of those has gone to the point where the next step is to figure out how to do real clearance and large scale manufacturing. And those have to go a little bit together. So the technology is working well. Well, I think that these, the idea behind these kinds of tests will be used in the first world. Because right now the U.S. spends about, going on toward 20% of its gross domestic product on medicine. And we can't afford to do that, particularly since the medical system here doesn't work all that well for that amount of money. So how do you do that? And there are a wide variety of ideas and technologies that have to be brought to bear on the problem, but one of them has to do with the basic issue of information. And at the moment, diagnostics is not an enormous part of cost in the United States, to take it as an example, it's in the order of 15%, but it influences about 60% of expenditures because how you're treated depends on what you're diagnosed as having. However, the medical system has a business model that says that it's capitalist with a procedure-based payment system, so every test is charged for. And medicine is almost the only part of high technology that still works that way. Everywhere else what you find is the information is considered free, and then it's the archiving, the looking for patterns, the storing, the all, you know, selling to advertisers, all that is where the money comes. But you go and you have you know, I go and have a PSA done, you go and have a mammogram done, whatever it might be, somebody gets $50, $500, whatever it might be. And that's, that is not an acceptable ultimate thing. So what does that have to do with the developing world? And the answer is that the easiest way of getting the idea of low cost, as it were, almost for free information into the American system, I think is going to be to bring it in as an established technology. So our notion is to develop this in parts of the world where there is sensitivity to price and simplicity. 
develop it, make sure it works well as we think it will, and then when it's sort of cooked, then bring it back to the U.S.